Landscape HCTT. HCTT stands for Human Controlled Tape Transport. What it basically does is it allows you to play a cassette uh, as if you are the tape transport, which is to say you're the motor that turns the tape past the tape head. Inside of the HCTT, there is a tape head that will read a tape. There's lots of other stuff too. So if you want to engage the uh, human controlled tape transport, you're gonna need to put a tape in there, a cassette tape. There are other functions that we'll talk about later and it will work without a cassette in it in a variety of ways, but we'll talk about that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a cassette in it. Now, uh, this cassette is uh, a four track cassette that I made back in the probably early 90s. Um, yeah, that was probably it. Anyway, basically because I recorded on a, a sampler, like I used a sampler as a recording studio, uh, I needed a place to process samples outside of the sampler so I could sample them back in the way I wanted them to be. Anyway, so I recorded a lot of stuff on this tape. So there's all kinds of weird, uh, music and snippets and backing vocals and drum loops and things that I made in the 90s. So I thought it'd be fun to use this, especially since, I mean, that was the last time that cassettes were really relatively used. So um, I'm just going to put this in like so, head into the device to get it in there. You have to lift up on the spindles. Slide it in, and you'll know if you have it in the right place if the spindles go back to where they're supposed to be. Uh, that's it. Uh, now we're ready to see what happens. That's backwards. The small knob with the arrow, uh, if you follow the direction of that arrow, uh, you're going to get the tape going backwards. If you do not follow the direction of the arrow, arrow you are basically unspooling one of the spools, which uh, it's not a disaster, but it's probably not the thing you really want to do. The big knob with this arrow is the forward. Of course, uh, you can go in, you can go back and forth, which makes uh, what we typically know of as a scratching sound. The first thing that you learn is how difficult it is to effectively uh, turn a spindle at a constant rate with your human hand. I think, and this is something I didn't do, if you like <laughs> record the sound onto the cassette at a slow rate, you can get more speed and, it, and then have it be more in the range you want it to be instead of, you know, because it's easier to turn it faster than it is to turn it slow. I did not try this, however. Past this drum loop.
So you can have a lot of fun with it. Of course, it's going to depend on what material you have in it. It comes with a cassette, a, a random, bizarre, uh, who knows what cassette. I, I don't know what this is, but it's the one that came with it, and it's mostly of a guy talking. Uh, but yeah, you, you can use any sound source you want. I just find that these uh, cassettes that I recorded a bunch of different little snippets of things uh, many years ago are a lot of fun to work with. <laughs> You also learn how narrow the band of appropriate formant shape with the human voice is. It's right in one place, and if it's too fast, it's too chipmunky. If it's too slow, it's too slowed down. It's very interesting. <laughs> Okay, so uh, there are a lot of performance elements that exist on this device in addition to just being able to do things with tape. Anyway, I, could, I keep having fun with it instead of talking about it. I can't help myself. Anyway, you have two different knobs up here, uh, which will help in your performance. Uh, you have a knob that is some kind of tone knob. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. But as you'll find, you will turn this faster than the original sound. And in doing so, you will actually shift uh, the frequencies present in that sound into a higher range. You'll get less bass because you're going too fast. And the bass frequencies, because of the speed, are shifted into less than bass frequencies, more into mid-range frequencies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it helps to actually have something that adds a little bit of low end. Let me find something where we can demonstrate this. Drums would be awesome. So if we turn this up, let's turn it up a quarter away. Halfway. You can hear that there's a bass booze happening. Quite a difference, as you can see. So here's with nothing. And here's with everything. This 
it's doing some other stuff and it adds a little bit of noise but i mean if you're if you're actually manipulating tape uh noise is probably not going to be a deal for you okay i'll turn down this and uh let's move on to the next sound to demonstrate the next thing uh the next is a gain control and it not only gains but it also gets noisier and more interesting so it tends to run a little quiet i've found uh so this thing really helps However, it does add some noise, but that's this whole, that's kind of the whole aesthetic of this whole thing with, you know, tape technology. Noise is part of the deal, and in many ways, it's uh, it's cool, and it, it indicates what you're working with. Um, of course, this is just the circuitry, but uh, my understanding is that it is using uh, vintage cassette technology in there, so it's all part of the experience. Um, so I'll turn it back down, but I am going to turn this back up because I like it. <laughs> There's some actual scratching in this. That's us scratching the scratching. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. All right, so that's not it, though. We're not done. There's still a bunch of stuff we can talk about. Number one, there is an audio input on the side that will allow you to take advantage of some of the other functionality. You, uh, the, the audio does go through this uh, weird tone knob and this weird gain knob. So uh, you can add some character or flavor to a otherwise flat digital recording by putting it through here. Give it some grit, give it some noise, give it some buzz. Um, in addition to that, there are there is where we have the light over here. What this does is it is an audio interrupt. So when you press it, no sound comes out. <laughs> Which allows you, as you're doing other things, to sort of you can articulate the sound in the way that you want. And you can even play the noise, actually. Uh, anyway, so uh, this interrupt allows you to articulate sounds, and you'll see me use that in a number of the demonstration demonstration videos that will follow. And if you watch my channel, you've probably seen me demonstrate the landscape stereo field. And the stereo field is basically some other, I think it's actually also cassette technology or some sort of car radio technology and basically it has a bunch of bizarre connections that you control by touching copper traces uh like these here and uh so that sort of functionality in a very small scale is also in the hctt this one these arches actually turns your body into a radio antenna so <laughs> yeah um Apparently, wherever I am right now, this building, the, the radio signal you're going to get is not very pretty. I'm going to have to turn this down in post because it's not very pleasant. I'm going to turn this down right here. Uh, so here's the sound I get when I turn into an antenna. It's really unpleasant and tonal, which makes it super unpleasant. Uh, but <laughs> I have uh, I tested this in another building and I got uh, just weird sounds, uh, not a shrieking, shrieking, terrifying tone like that. Uh, but I, you're gonna, I'm going to submit you to the terrifying tone one more time because there's another thing you can do with this because you are being an antenna. If you touch, if you touch it with one hand 
and then you touch a, a device that has circuits in it that have power going through them or something. I'm not sure how it works. It's uh, basically a circuit sniffer, I think is what it's called, uh, <laughs> in the directions. But basically, if you touch things that have circuits in them or something, it'll make a new terrifying noise. So I'm going to touch this, and then I'm going to touch my preamp. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Uh, a better noise than that one. So now I'm going to touch it again, and I'm going to touch a, a Dreadbox Hypnosis. Um, I'm going to... I didn't think of this until just now, but I'm going to say you could do some really cool sort of rhythmic things by touching these things rhythmically. That's kind of cool. Or multiple things at once. I wish I, wish I had more hands. Okay. Uh, then there are these uh, circular ones that uh, don't do anything on their own, but if you're touching the... I've made you into a radio element, and then you touch these moons, uh, you'll get some different sounds. Let's see what happens if you touch something with a circuit in it while you're touching the radio part, and then touch this thing. sort of flatulent, but <laughs> still, uh, you get all kinds of very strange noises that you will not get anywhere else, basically due to the humidity and the, your skin moisture and the various circuits you're touching and the radios, radio waves that are going through the area that you're at. And uh, there's just so many different things. Even just with these two little contact points, you'll be able to tap into some really interesting noises that if you're not a noise musician, which you may not be, that's not to say noise isn't useful and recording those noises and sampling them and using them creatively uh, can yield some really cool results. So in addition to all of these, all of the cool things you can do with tape, I can only imagine uh, having a tape that has porno recorded on it would be an interesting experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> Try as I might, I can't keep in time. Okay, uh, so we talked about the audio input over here. Now you might notice that there are uh, two cables going out of this. It will take the sounds that are going into it, including the tape sounds, and it will output the voltages of the tape sounds into CV, and uh, it will send out gates at certain um, amplitude levels. So if you wanted to use this with your modular system as a modulator, you can do that as well. I have it hooked up to a modular system here, uh, the STG Sound Labs uh, Radiophonic One. And uh, so let's, uh, let's I, I don't have anything exciting going on, but I do want to show you that this works. So I'm just going to connect this. All right, and I'm going to turn down this. So now all we're hearing is 
uh, the modular system. Let me turn this up so we get the most output possible. Check, check. Okay. Okay, so I have it basically, I have the gate triggering the envelope and uh, also I have the gate triggering the VCO, so that's why you're hearing the pitch variations. And I do have it hooked up to uh, the filter so that the filter is affected by the input, but I'm not sure it's doing a tremendous amount. Those little chirps, that's it. <laughs> doing something. I probably have it in a drum sound. Let me get it out of a drum sound. I can also, uh, since this is not <laughs> yielding a whole lot of results, I can uh, go full nuclear here and uh, do this. The, what I'm doing is actually opening and closing the filter. The best way of using that, I think, is up to you. But at least you know that... But as you can see, you can manipulate the filter uh, with the, or anything with the CV output uh, that comes out of the back of the HCTT. So we have basically covered all of the functionality present in the device. And I've found that uh, the real thing about this device isn't what it does, it's what you do with it. What is the tape? What are the sounds that you have on tape that you are putting into it to get what you want? And it's going to take a lot of fun and experimentation. I've made a lot of tapes of just my initial uh, messing with largely this cassette and another cassette and just seeing what sounds I can make and what I can do with the material that exists on the tape. It is uh, the next extension of the Musi Konkret movement of uh, the mid uh, last century. Uh, you get to see what your recorded sounds, what you can do with them. And I think ultimately your goal could be to start recording sounds in ways that you know you can use uh, with this device, which is something I have not yet done, but it'd be really interesting to record different sounds and see uh, with the expectation of what uh, this sort of movement results in so you you have a sense of what you can tape in order to make it useful to you as you're using this in addition to just making happy accidents with all the the sounds you can find on literally any tape uh, this tape for me is super awesome because it's got all kinds of different diverse sounds happening on it but even just a normal tape of music you can find really interesting things and use them <laughs> That's some of the most irritating wah guitar I've ever heard. Oh, my God. 
So anyway, this is the Landscape HCTT, and it is a fascinating device. First of all, just to explore how to use tape as a music medium and a music source and a musical instrument, uh, as well as just interesting sounds. Anybody who wants to, you know, do sound design, you can uh, take some really ordinary sounds and make them into things that are not ordinary. Or you can find really interesting timbres that exist in just how you manipulate a sound. It is fascinating. And uh, so basically, like, for example, the theme to the series is just me doing experiments with drum loops where I'm actually trying to play them and find ways to make them rhythmic by moving backwards and forwards. Uh, there are a million creative things that you can do and come up with sounds that no one else could create or even duplicate. It's really magical. Uh, but coming up will be a lot of... Uh, examples of me doing experiments and trying to find uh, audio snippets that work well in various contexts using the uh, Dreadbox hypnosis for effects to characterize the sound. As you can see, like the sound is cool on its own, but when you start adding effects, it becomes something completely different <laughs> and amazing. Uh, and also I'll do some effort with uh, various drum beats and things. So uh, this is the landscape HCTT. Yeah. 